Yo, what's going on everyone? So today's episode, again, is going to be another little quick episode. We are going to be installing secondary fuse boxes in the Miata. Now the way that I have the gauges and all the other little accessories for the car wired up, it's a little bit ghetto rig, it's a little bit of a rat's nest. And as you can see, there was a lot of electrical problems with gauges not working, with the shift light flashing me in the face every two seconds. So I decided I want to clean it up. So that's what we're going to do today. Stick around. Okay, so here is the overall plan that we are going to do. As you can see, we're going to add a fuse or a secondary fuse box to the car. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to run some wires from the battery. It is going to go into a relay. And from that relay, it is going to go to the fuse box. And from the fuse box, we are going to have all of our accessories like our gauges hooked up to it. Now, the reason why we have to use a relay is because if we connect it directly to the battery, it'll always be constantly on and supplied with 12 volts. And with the relay, what we can do is we can essentially have it only turn on when the 12 volt accessory which is basically when we turn the key and when that turns on it activates the relay which is like an electronic switch and then that'll go ahead and provide power from the battery to our gauges. Now these are the two fuse boxes that we are going to use for the car. I'll leave a link in the description below. Essentially which this one is is going to be our 12 volt accessory which is going to be the main fuse box that everything hooks up to. Uh, you can see we have our negative here and then we also have this main fuse box area. So take it off where we're gonna plug all the positives to for all the accessories. And then we'll also put in some fuses here. And what's really cool is that if a fuse does blow, then it'll trigger this LED light. It'll turn on and we'll know, you know, which fuse is busted. Now we also have to run a 12 volt constant to a uh, lot of the gauges just because they have memory. For example, you know, what color or what warning setting you may have set. And so we're gonna need to provide a constant 12 to those gauges as well so they can keep that memory. And for that, since we don't really need a negative, since that'll be taken care of by this fuse box, this fuse box will just be 12 volt constant power. And as you can see, it's just one place for a positive hookup. And then again, the same positive connections with the spots for the fuse. Here is the relay that we'll also be using so that it'll trigger our fuse boxes on and off when the key is in the ignition. We got a five pin. You can definitely do this with a four pin as well. Now, the only difference is that a fifth pin relay has a basically a spade that will allow power when the relay is what they consider off. When the key isn't in the ignition, then this like middle prong right here will actually provide a 12 volt constant. But I'll go ahead and put a diagram up on the screen as well so you can kind of see roughly how each of these pins interact with each other. We're also gonna wire up a new cigarette lighter. For whatever reason, like this works, it powers my phone and, and whatever, but when I hook up the shift light, it power cycles it, which means there's some sort of unstable connection for the cigarette lighter. So we're just going ahead and replace it and hopefully that fixes that issue. So I already took out the old cigarette lighter and got this marine, you know, after market $10 cigarette lighter replacement and I already kind of installed it had to drill it out a little bit because this is a little bit larger than the old unit just got to wire it up extend it but yeah we're replacing that as well and here's the rat's nest that powers all of our gauges a lot of it I tapped into the radio uh, which generally works pretty good but you know it's just three gauges tapped into the same wire like I mean I guess there's definitely a lot of uh, room for an unstable connection which is probably why my water temp gauge keeps cycling on and off sometimes so we're gonna go ahead and clean that up uh, which is again why we're doing our secondary fuse box so hopefully this looks a little bit nicer now the way we're going to run the wires is obviously we're going to run the wires from the gauges and the other accessories from the inside of the car we're going to run it up the transmission tunnel and through the back of the car right here where we're already running some wires and some other things and that'll go straight into the trunk and from there we're going to probably gonna mount our fuse boxes I'd imagine right there in that general area uh, pretty much where the spare tire used to be and that'll give us a pathway to our battery
Okay, so we got everything hooked up and all the wires hooked up. Let's turn on the car again and see if it works. Okay, that's good. The wiring is all set up. We got our conduit there, cleans up the wiring a bit. It's a little bit messy going from the fuse box to the battery, okay? I admit, but I mean, it's a lot cleaner setup than it was before. Got the dash all put up. It's pretty clean, you know? It's pretty clean, it's pretty clean. Uh, now let's see the real test. Oh yes, all the gauges work, everything works. Uh, that's a win in my book. All right, I'm super stoked. All the gauges work. Even our 12 volt cigarette lighter works because you can tell the melody box turned on. I'm pretty happy. The wiring, it's its pretty clean. I don't have to worry about all these spliced wires in the back. I kind of want to plug in the shift light and drive it around a bit just to see if we fixed uh, the issue with the 12 volt cigarette lighter, but I think we did. Yeah, really happy with the, the way it turned out. So yeah. Yeah, and there you see it. We got all of our wiring hooked up. Everything works good. So far, so good anyway. Uh, cleaned up a lot of the wiring, so I'm pretty stoked at how that ended up. Wasn't able to use the Relay's 12 volt constant. I actually had to end up hooking up to the, the battery completely, so I don't know what's going on, but I mean, I made it work, so it works. So I'm good and I'm happy there. But that's gonna do it for today's episode. Thanks a lot for watching as always. Please subscribe, like if you like it, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.